There's a topic in college algebra that kind of always gives students a headache, uh, and I have a trick that I call solving for i that I think makes it a lot easier. So come along with me and let's solve, let's find the roots of some polynomials, even if the roots are imaginary. I'm going to solve a polynomial equation. The method is you're going to use the calculator, uh, either the graph or the table, to find one of the zeros. And then that is also giving you a factor. So the next step is to divide out by that factor and now get a smaller polynomial. And then you just keep doing that process until you get it down to a quadratic. And then once it's a quadratic, you just use your regular like quadratic equation solving techniques to get the answer. So, so let me jump in. I'm going to solve the one that's here on the board. Okay, so I just plugged it into my calculator here, just right as it's, it appears. I'm just checking, did I plug it in right? Looks good to me, minus 18, okay. And then when we hop over to the graph, uh, it, it shows us a little piece of the graph. And it looks like this, uh, this polynomial function does cross right at x equals one. So if you push second graph, that's gonna open up the table and it's just gonna show you a list of x values and what y values you get if you plugged in those x values. And actually you can see right here, does confirm that if x is equal to one, y is zero. So now we've already got one of our zeros. So let's uh, let's divide up by that factor so that we can find the other ones. So I'm going to use synthetic division in order to uh, divide these polynomials. But but if you wanted to, you could use long division. But just remember that then the factor would actually be x minus one. So synthetic is a little bit faster. So I'm going to use that. Um, okay, so let me do it. So one comes down, then one times one is one, then one plus negative seven is negative six, and then uh, one times negative six is negative six, and then 24 minus six is 18, then one times 18 is 18, and there we go, boom, we get that zero right there. So that tells us that we are actually, uh, that, that this is actually a factor. So we have correctly found one of these zeros. If you don't get zero right here, that means that you either messed up the long division or uh, you plugged into the calculator wrong or you, you got some zero wrong. This, this zero right here has to happen. So I've taken this uh, quotient that we got uh, from our long division and I turned that back into a polynomial and that just gave me a simple quadratic equation. So we've already made it down to this last little step right here where we have to solve the quadratic. So I'm just gonna use the quadratic formula and that'll just spit out an answer. Okay, so I was just solving this quadratic equation uh, and I ran into something kind of special happening. Um, so I'm just, you know, plugging it in, everything's going going well. Uh, and then on the inside of this equation right there, something funny is kind of happening. You can see I'm doing 36 minus 72. So that's giving me negative uh, 36. So, you know, it is absolutely possible for you to be solving a polynomial equation and for you to come up with imaginary numbers as the answers. And this is how it happens. So let me go ahead and just finish this um, so we can simplify that answer. Okay, so, uh, you know, when you do this, I calculated this square root of negative 36, and I got 6i because the square root of 36 is 6, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. And then be careful uh, when you are simplifying quadratics, uh, that line goes uh, underneath everything. So you got to make sure everything gets divided by that. And that's it. That's all the all the zeros of this polynomial. You'll see this is a polynomial of degree three. And we ended up with exactly three zeros here. So that must happen. Um, so be careful. Sometimes when you're solving homework problems or something, they will say list all the rational zeros or list all the real zeros. So just make sure that your answers do actually are actually what they want here. This this problem just said find all the zeros. So I am I am allowed to have all of these answers. But if it said find all the rational zeros or find all the real zeros, then these two wouldn't count because those aren't real numbers. Um, so you know just be careful. Make sure you read the directions correctly. Okay, so I'm trying to find all the zeros of this polynomial. And the issue is, is that they give me one of the zeros. So I know what one of the factors is, but since uh, this zero that they gave me has an I in it, then that means the factor that I know has an I in it. So, you know, the book and, and a lot of other math content that I've seen is going to tell you to do synthetic division uh, with, with I's in it. 
Um, that's ugly. It's it's an ugly process. You end up having to multiply a lot of complex numbers. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you this trick that I call the solve for i trick. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us produce a factor of this polynomial that no longer has i's in it. It really makes it a lot easier. So so let me let me show you how it works. So we've got one of these zeros is x equals 3 minus 2i. So I'm going to just try to get the i by itself. So I'll, I'll move that 3 over to the other side. So I'm just subtracting 3 from both sides. So x minus 3 is equal to 2i. And here's the trick. What I'm going to do now is square both sides. And the reason I think you can see already, this means that that's going to make all the i's go away. Uh, so let me just square this. I'm getting x squared minus 6x plus 9. And on the right-hand side, when I do negative 2 squared, I'm going to get 4. And then when I do i squared, I'm going to get negative 4. So that means this is negative 4. And now if I add 4 to both sides, I'm going to get x squared minus 6x plus 13 equals 0. <laughs> so what that means is this is a zero of the original polynomial. So it's a factor of the original polynomial. So that means this is a zero of the original polynomial. So that means this is a factor of the original polynomial. And this guy right here has no more i's in it. So once you use that solve for i trick and you end up with this factor, then that is really going to make the problem a lot more simple because now I have a factor that doesn't have i's in it. So I can't use synthetic division anymore because this isn't just like a nice, simple linear polynomial, but it's no big deal. I can just use long division. So I'm just repeating the process here. You know, I've got one of the factors, so I'm just going to divide out by that factor and then start working with the quotient. All right, so let me just crank out this long division. This is going to be fun. Yay, I did it. So I did the long division. It was kind of interesting because all of the x cubed terms cancel. So we got to skip one of the steps. I guess I kind of like to do it like uh, I like to put this uh, minus seven down there at the end. Uh, so I ended up with a really, really simple quotient. So what is that? So so now what do we need to do next? So now we need to just keep going and solve this quotient. Um, so now we just need to solve x squared minus 7 equals 0. I mean, this is like really easy to solve, right? I'm just going to move that 7 over to the other side. So x squared is equal to 7. So now you square root both sides and you end up with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. So that's brilliant. So far, this is a polynomial of degree 4. And here I have one solution here and two solutions there. So that's three solutions and there should be four. So let me just show you the last little bit and we've got it here. We solved this problem. Okay, so I just want to share with you this theorem that is complex zeros always come in conjugate pairs. That actually makes sense. If you want to just kind of have a look at the quadratic formula, you can you can convince yourself that this is true. But anyways, it is a true fact, so let's just use it. Um, so what we know right now is we know this, this zero right here is of the form A minus BI. So I've got one zero here, three minus two i. And then by this theorem, I know that I've got another one as well. It's got to be three plus two i. Uh, and then I've got these two answers right here, the square root of seven and negative the square root of seven. So that's it. That's it. We did it. Um, here we have a polynomial of degree four, and we ended up with one, two, three, four answers. Um, so this is brilliant. You know, this process really shout out to this solve for I trick. It really takes something that was really ugly. And actually, in the end, I think, you know, of all the types of this problem, this one kind of ended up being the easiest. If you can just remember this solve for I trick, then the rest of it kind of just flows out naturally. So, you know, let me know if you get stuck or if you have questions or something. I'm happy to help you.